In this poem, the late Captain Grose's Peregrinations Through Scotland, Burns referred to his home as the Land of Cakes, words that pay homage to the nation's oldest and simplest oatcake or bannock. And it's doubtful that many genuine lovers of Burns celebrating in 19th century highlands would have eaten extravagant creamy desserts. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be David Tennant and put on a Scottish accent as it will just be embarrassing and an insult to Burns. But here's a verse from that poem. Here land o' cakes and brither Scots, frae Maiden Kirk to Johnny Groats. If there's a hole in a your coats, I read you tent it. A child's among you taking notes, and faith he'll print it. Well, I gave it a go. Anyway, the recipe I'm making in honour of Burns Night is for Highland Slim Cakes, and it's taken from a notorious Scottish cook, Christina Jane Johnson, a.k.a. Margaret or Meg Dodds. Christina was a liberal activist and an early feminist. Her book of 1862, The Cook and Housewife's Manual, was published under the pseudonym of Mistress Margaret Dodds, a character that was conjured up by the author Sir Walter Scott. And you can read more about her in my book, Chefs of the Past. Now, let's take a look at the ingredients. And this recipe for slim cakes is really simple. We've got our flour in the bowl. We're just going to add the butter, which has been softened a bit. The recipe just says to add butter. It doesn't say anything about how it's mixed in. So it's important that you get it quite soft because we're not aiming for a breadcrumb effect or anything like that. There we go. And I expect the hot milk will help too when we add that. So in goes our beaten egg. One beaten egg, lovely golden colour. Let's mix that in. There we go. And the idea is to end up with a reasonably stiff paste that we can um, create a dough with and then roll it out into rounds before we griddle them. There we go and so now I'm going to add the hot milk while it's hot. There we go and that will help make it into that doughy consistency. So you'll just have to use your nouse as to know how much to add. You'll know when it gets to that stiff dough, when you can roll it into a ball, basically. There we go. And then it's at this stage of the recipe where um, it does actually say that you can leave it to um, leave it to rest for a bit. We're going to leave it to rest and maybe swell up in size a bit too, which is ironic because considering they're called slim cakes. Okay, so we've got that sort of rough shaped ball of dough, there you can see. So I'm actually going to leave that to rest for a little bit before rolling it out. There you go, see it's lovely. It's like a pastry really. We're rolling it out and yep. Cooking them on the griddle. Right, I'm rolling out my dough, which is looking great. Glad I let it rest for a few minutes. It's going to be uh, quite thin, I suppose. It doesn't say what thickness, but I'm assuming slim cakes means that they should be reasonably thin. And right now, I'm going to cut some out into rounds um, and it says you can have any shape rounds from like um, 
well, even the size of a meat platter, I think it actually says, but um, this uh, cutter came is one of a, a series of cutters that I actually got from, acquired from, uh, they were from Shaw's Biscuit Factory in Gateshead, and it's a bakery that opened in the 1930s, so these are actually from the 1930s by Frederick Shaw, and he um, distributed his baked goods across the northeast. Um, and during the war, he worked with the Red Cross to supply regular food parcels to the front line. And the company was bought up by the Northumbrian Fine Foods, um, who own Pruitts. Oh, I didn't do too well there, did I? See, too much talking, not enough concentrating. But we're getting some nice rounds here. So as you can see, not too thick. They are slim after all. And, uh, yeah, got quite a few of these now. So I'm going to put these aside. And um, the next stage will be to griddle them on my beautiful old Victorian griddle, cast iron Victorian griddle, which I use actually in everyday life too. So um, I'm imagining they're going to cook well. All right, so that's going to be our next stage. Simple. Right. The key with a griddle is just to get it really, really hot. See, I've only had this on for a couple of minutes and everything is already steaming these lovely little cakes they're doing beautifully well I don't really know what to have with these um, I mean obviously originally these were very basic simple cakes um, not fancy so they probably just would have been eaten as they were, but I don't see any harm in adding a little bit of butter uh, and maybe something sweet, um, as I would like to serve these after a nice, maybe after, oh, maybe you could actually have them with your cockaleeky soup on Burns Night. But I think I would prefer these, oh, they're strictly supposed to be cakes, to have these um, after you've had your Burns Night Supper as your dessert, palate cleanser after all that haggis, neeps and tatties, maybe even with a little bit of jam or something sweet or a sweet sauce.